It is um, 6.15 on January 13th, 2020, and we're gathered here today um, in conformance with the open meeting law, which we've been posted in three places, right? And on the website, and emailed to interested parties. Got one? So we can move forward with our... Um, um, before we um, go on, is there any additions to the agenda that anyone would like to make that was posted? Harlan, you have one? This is both. <coughs> and Mason, you have one. Uh, yes, this is a request for uh, our next uh, select board meeting. Uh, I would like to have the ability to have a discussion about uh, a potential policy related to the last select board meeting where Bruce and his partner were here and, and Tom uh, had a lot of concerns about their issues they brought forth and uh, I think it's time that we may we should have a discussion uh, more detailed about it uh, from my opinion uh, I, I do think uh, there's... Okay, wait. This, okay. You're going to put this on the agenda for next meeting, right? So before That's you go like, on to like the discussion. Here for, this yeah. here is from the Secretary of State this week, and uh, concerned about access to public records. And I'd like to submit that to the board okay. and for the board to review uh, for official uh, elected officials if they haven't already seen it. Uh, I do have concerns about... Um, cell phone usage of public records and uh, and uh, where we need to go for it. Um, excuse me, Mason, I'm not remembering what it was that these people were discussing at the last meeting. I'm sorry. Security. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, yes. Security uh, for town records, is that yes. what you're saying? Okay, thank you. So if I get this right, you don't want to talk about this now. You just wanted to put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Correct. I, I wasn't yeah. sure, Tom, if you had... Yeah. Uh, a follow-up at all at this meeting for on that or you want to wait till um, the next meeting we did do some you're talking about the social security issue and that privacy also issue the security of how we are you know how we are handling our uh, records um, we have done some research on that actually actually i didn't know if you're going to present that tonight or um, next the next meeting is, in my opinion, there is still a little bit of controversy over the interpretation, and so I'm, I'm not comfortable making a statement right now until we look at this a little further, unless you are. I haven't dug into it. No. Okay. It was I, something I, that Patty was working on, and she's not joining us tonight. She's not here today. She did a little work on it. Um, however, I'm not, I'm not convinced that it's the proper answer. And so I don't want to put out any false information or information that I don't completely understand. Um, but it is being, it's definitely being looked at. So and as far, and next, next, next meeting and, we have a discussion about And as far as we understand things to be, we are doing things in proper accordance with the VSA. But we don't, not detected any violation of any kind. So, but... There's some opinion as to uh, the interpretation of whether um, Social Security numbers, um, when handled at the municipal level, the town clerk level, um, whether that's exactly what the, I guess, the rules are to keep that information confidential. I'm not totally clear on that, so I'd like to do a little more homework first. So I think so it would be a, a good suggestion to, to put that on the agenda for next yeah, meeting. Yeah, I think it would be yeah. a good timing for that. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Anybody else? Any additions to the agenda? Yes. Just wait to the end or I can just do it now? Um, well, you add your, your topic now and then we can talk about it later. This way we just, we're adding to the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Um, Angle Road and the sidewalk in town. All right. 
So we, um, I was not here at the last meeting, and since Pat is not here, we can't um, approve those minutes since there's only, Tom was the only one here. So we'll table those until the next meeting. <clears throat> we have, um, that's in there. And we have, um, as a guest, Lizzie, you're right there on the top of the list. Do you want to um, present some information sure. about the um, petition for the climate emergency declaration? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, for those who don't know me, I'm Lizzie Shackelford. Uh, I'm part of a small volunteer group of uh, residents here who've gotten together uh, to look into what we could do here in Rochester. So I wanted to alert people to the fact that right now we have, um, we're collecting signatures for a petition. It's going to put on the ballot for the town meeting in March, um, a vote on whether or not the town of Rochester should adopt a climate emergency declaration. I have, it's very short, but if you want to check it out, if you may or may not be interested in signing it or in just reading it, I'll leave a copy here. But uh, we're going to be submitting it tomorrow. We've gathered already more than 70 signatures, and I still have quite a few petitions that I haven't gathered yet. Tomorrow's going to be the deadline for collecting them, and they're going to be submitting them on Wednesday to the town clerk. It's not doing anything um, prescriptive or required by the town. The bottom line is basically that we're recognizing that there is a climate emergency in the world that is affecting us here. And what we're asking the town uh, kind of planning and leadership to do is just to consider climate impact of decisions that we're making here in town. So it's really just an early first step. It's not requiring anything that's going to cost the town any money. It's just putting it on the agenda of things that we consider. So if anybody has questions, I'd be happy to answer questions. I'm, I'll stay a few minutes afterwards if you want to check it out. So uh, you know, we welcome you to sign it. And for those who just have questions about it, we're going to be scheduling something public in February when we get a little bit closer to the voting date, when we can, um, you know, we'll have a meeting somewhere here in town. We'll be sharing information about what some other towns have done. Uh, this has been an initiative that's happened all over the world, and it's been happening right here in our neighborhood. Norwich has already passed a similar declaration, and I know that Heartland has one underway. I'll stick around afterwards if anybody has questions. Thank you. So this, I should say that um, um, part of my activities in going and working with the Regional Planning Commission as there was a presentation about that Vermont, this, we're not alone in this, Vermont in itself has adopted a, trying to go 90% renewable by 2050. And if you go to the Vermont Energy Dashboard online, it has very detailed information about specific municipalities and what is being done and what's not being done. And you can, I mean, right down to who's got solar panels on their house and so it's it's interesting to see that there's there's movement um, and it basically transportation is the biggest biggest challenge in terms of the biggest um, um, contributor to greenhouse gases and that would be followed by um, inefficiencies in home and home heating and then it goes on down the line but there's this is a copy that I brought to leave at the town clerk's office so if anyone wants to peruse that or like I said you go online to the Vermont Energy Dashboard .com. it's a f uh, wealth of information about what is being done and what could be done to um, increase awareness about that so. all right uh, um, another guest we had Mason have you on here that you had something you wanted to talk about Hi. Yes, I had put it on the agenda as a right. discussion for us all in, in, in talking outside the regular box and how to uh, create funding for so many of our projects. And uh, uh, we do have some big challenges ahead right now. Uh, just quietly last week, the state has informed us that the education budget on the state level is going to have a 6% increase. So, as usual, taxes are rising, and we have to be careful with our local population, our taxpayers, that we're not overburdening them. And when it comes to Rec and Park, uh, it seems like in the last 15, 20 years that we've seen a huge increase with nonprofits, 501 501c3s. And it seems to be working well for a lot of these organizations. Uh, even our historical society is a nonprofit entity. 
And uh, it seems like this is the way to go. And uh, the tennis courts might be a good example. Right now, we're looking at uh, $10,000 of repair. Maybe this is the time to step away from the format we have and look at encouraging those in the community that want to participate in tennis to create a 501c3 organization, the Rochester Tennis Club. And, let, and as a town, we go ahead and make an arrangement to let the tennis courts go to the organization with certain boundaries which works for everyone. And let the organization, which most likely would have greater ability to actually do funding through the national tennis organizations and everything else, to, uh, to, take, uh, to, to move forward with that. Uh, I think this might go a long ways with a lot of our taxpayers in, in that. And I think this is also true with a lot of or other organizations too, that we should encourage, encourage them to go with a nonprofit direction to, to do that. And if they are looking for funding, it can be put on our annual town meeting agenda as other nonprofits do to ask the citizenship if they would like to contribute to the effort. Uh, and uh, this might include uh, uh, the ice skating activity that we have in town. Um, as of, I th just recently read that, uh, I think Dean was asking, well, you know, we're going to have to have maintenance. We're going to have to increase, increase, increase. So this increasing process after we create things creates more financial expenses. And those expenses should not be bared by the taxpayers who are already struggling so hard. Uh, I think a lot of taxpayers would rather see money go, if we have to raise it, is to make sure the exterior of the library is well cared for. It's in disrepair, and that's where the funds should be going, is toward the library. So I just, I was hoping this would be a discussion, so I'll end and see where it goes from here. Bruce? Well, I think the discussion in this format might be a little premature. I, I would suggest you go to the Recreation Committee and start the ball rolling there and have that committee toss around all the ideas and then come up with some solid proposals and then bring that to the select board for further discussion. My first uh, response is that it seems a little, the town is already a nonprofit, and so creating uh, another nonprofit organization to take over an aspect of the town seems a little, little redundant, look a little like a shell game. I am not quite um, seeing the practicality of that unless you just are suggesting shedding the responsibilities of the town, as that sounds like what you're, uh, yes, I'm that's what you're, and so I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I find this a little disingenuous when you personally are responsible for almost $60,000 of expense to the town over the last few years by well, do, suing you know, the town to claim to that the chair and respect like, me as hey, a property owner instead of doing that type of crap right there. What? I'm just pointing out you're concerned about spending money, but you've been suing the town claiming that town property is not there. And so it's like I'm you're sorry, worried about $10,000 for at this moment doing yeah. that. Well, I'm sorry, but that's my response to the well, discussion that you brought in there. There you go. Not correct yeah. for you to sit there as a chair and speak like that. I'd like to also say that it, it sounds like you're trying to push the responsibility from one organization essentially to another organization. In a sense that it sounded to me like you were saying, we don't need to spend all this money on recreation. Let's put it into this. It should be going into this. And you, you're you're shifting funds from one place to another, yeah. and for what reason, I'm not clear whether there's something you favor, but I don't think that's, that's right to do that. I mean, these are all, everything is important. These are all important things. Recreation is very important. And if you're suggesting that we just uh, not fund recreation anymore, instead put that money someplace else, I mean, that, that's okay to suggest that, but it also tells us that there's an agenda here. 
And I think we need to be careful about that. That's all I'm saying. The discussion, is, you know, I would, you know, the discussion is good. You know, no question. Thank you. Thank you. Tom. You know, no question. But I would, I would hate to see that 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 game being played where we're trying to, you know, I think it should go here and I think it should go there. Everybody's got an opinion about that. That's all I'm saying. I, I really don't have an opinion on it one way or the other, but it seems legitimate to me to to say, hey, when we have something like Rasta that's promoting trails, that's a nonprofit. Why wouldn't something like that be a nonprofit? Why wouldn't that be is a, a, a smaller group of people that use it? And if we are talking about people being concerned about their taxes, then I mean, I, I, again, I, I really don't have a pain on it one way or the other. But to me, it, it seems like a, a legitimate question to say, hey, if we're looking at our tax, you know, how much we're paying for taxes, and there's a way for our taxes to be reduced by having that move to a nonprofit, just like Rasta or other nonprofits that we have a ton. I, I think that's I think that's a but, legitimate. But Rasta concern. is a multi-town. Um, project right well I, I don't really know I'm just saying I, I don't no. know if I'm just referring to town to the town of Rochester right now excuse me the town of Rochester I mean things like the skate park and stuff I'm um, not the skate park but the skating area and so forth that, that's that's the town of Rochester right yeah and I, okay. I, I don't know if Rasta is a, is a is a is a is a larger other, event I, I don't know if there's other nonprofits in Rochester that do things okay okay I'm just saying it sounds like a, if, know, if, if there, there are, are it seems like a legitimate question Mason? The Historical Society is a nonprofit entity. Could you explain why it's separate from the town? Because it was established that way in 1976. Okay. And it was established as, an, as a nonprofit, 501. It doesn't request funds from the town. Okay. So why not have a tennis club that's a nonprofit? I would like to just address recreation. One of the things with recreation, it's primarily for the children in this town, and we've lost most of the children in the town to other towns. The recreation department spends a great deal of time on youth sports. We all know that the parents can't afford a great deal in this town. That helps have a place for kids to go to learn how to play soccer, to have play basketball, um, other other things like that. They have the they have the option of using the skate space, which was there wasn't a lot of town money that went into skate space. It was largely donated money, and now it's so many. It's 15 or 16 years old, and it requires maintenance. But it was largely done with. Uh, funds that were donated and continue to be donated. Martha, you? Yeah, to address that as well, um, Skate Space was put together by people, it, it was in, in memory of Kevin Doherty's daughter who was killed in a car accident. Um, uh, funds were raised, I donated the land to the town. I mean, we've done the best we could on a shoestring. Um, and Nancy's absolutely right, um, the things that we do, I, I'm on the rec committee things that we do are for the mostly for the young people in town and since we don't have a junior high or high school in town anymore this is a way of getting kids involved in things and um, it, we fund the elementary basketball program that's going on now um, and um, you know it's a lot of people enjoy going to, to skate at skate space I can't speak for the tennis course myself because I don't play tennis but um, you know it's it, I think it, that's an important thing I think is there a, a, an extenuating factor with the tennis courts that that was um, they were initially um, some grant They were initially to the town? funded by the Bureau of Outdoor Recreation. They were taken out by Irene, and they were replaced by FEMA. So that so there's very little town money in it. But I was just saying that being said, that might complicate trying to take in take that and that that was given to the town specifically and then create it as another entity there are probably complications in there but 
Terry. Yeah, I saw it in a tennis course. When we put the septic system down there, we had to go through the federal government get permission to do that. And they're all full ground. It's not something the town could get permission to do because the town theoretically really doesn't have the final say over the tennis courts or that ball field. And so the town couldn't just say we could put the septic system there. We had to go through the feds to get it. Special permission to put them in. And we had to go up to their specs. And I'll just say the tennis court, out uh, of the skating ring, the fire department floods that several times yes. a year. I'm sorry, at I forgot zero to pay. That. Yes, I forgot the to mention that. The guys donate their it. time. And as far as I know, I've never had one fireman that's got any kids that used it. We appreciate them doing it too. But, oh, yes, uh, yeah, go ahead. Of course, of course, we all appreciate that. I'm just talking about different new structural ideas, potentials to make it work for all the taxpayers. If we have a good community that wants to participate with the tennis courts, let them be enthusiastic and create the drive to create the funding to maintain uh, the courts. They are in a floodplain and we potentially could have another complete wipeout and I don't know if FEMA would, rep uh, would repay for the rebuilding of the tennis courts again. We may find out. Does we'll FEMA, find out. does FEMA uh, do the maintenance on the tennis courts? No. No. That, that is up to our town. Yeah. Yes. yes. <clears throat> uh, Rob? So, um, I think uh, Mason has a good point uh, in that it's worthy to examine something like that. Particularly the, the uh, in the budget, the Recreation Department is one of the few things that you can move one way or the other. You know, you can't you can't live with much less salt, for instance. I mean, you can't say let's right. use less salt. Uh, I don't think the nonprofit thing, which is a very complicated procedure and loading one element up, uh, doesn't seem very functional to me. But it's worth talking about. And yeah. I don't know. I don't think this is probably the place to talk about it. I mean, the place to talk about it's, it is either in the budget committee, I guess, or that's in some special thinking, meeting, yeah. but because it's no. complicated. But it's not a bad idea. I mean, looking at this stuff again. Uh, recognizing its value is not a bad idea. I'm, you know, I'm kind of sorry that Mason is the <laughs> messenger here because he's a hard messenger to carry. But yeah, it's not a bad, it's not a bad idea. But I will go back again to saying we have lost all of our children in town. The one thing that we have for them of these of these programs, and they're all participating. All those young kids are participating. Sure, I, and, I, and you I think want to go valid. to some of the games. I think that's valid. All of you. The the uh, the park uh, uh, concerts bring all kinds of people in. You know, that's a tremendous. I know how you lay a value on that, but I think that's yeah. that's very valuable. I, I just think the point that these things can be examined, maybe outside of the closed uh, uh, budget committee, you know, is, is a worthy thing. Yeah. I don't know that now's yeah. the time to do it. Well, the budget committee spends countless hours dwelling over these very same questions. You know. And then presents mm -hmm. to the select board their their recommended budget. So that's um, perhaps a better place. But these kind of ideas will filter down to the budget committee and, and um, the rec committee. I you, think also when Mason first began speaking on this subject, he said other towns are doing things like creating a nonprofit in order to do X, Y, and Z in order to make it work. Now, I don't know what the towns are and what they're doing, but if there are things happening that are useful and keeping some of the taxpayers' money <coughs> free because of the nonprofits, then that's worth examining. I, you know, he was just using recreation as an example, but but I think there, I think, you know, we, we get used to doing what we do, have been doing for years, and then it's hard to think, oh, maybe we could do it a little bit differently or do something else. So I, 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 I think it's worth exploring. 
it's definitely worth exploring any kind of um, grant opportunities that are out there. And a, there's a lot more available to a municipality than, a, in the, of course, any kind of for-profit thing or the 501c. So I think the municipalities have a, a pretty good profile and exposure to grant op opportunities. So p perhaps there's research that could be done into money that could be found to support these things. Most of our grant work goes towards taking care of the roads, which is 90% of the activity that we do, floodplain <laughs> control. But um, yeah. Yes. Well, I appreciate that we had a discussion because that's why yeah. I put it on the agenda for tonight. Right. Uh, considering that we are coming up to the annual meeting. Uh, and that we will be uh, in the budget uh, talking about $5,000 in the short term on repairs to the uh, uh, tennis courts, uh, a two-phase situation. Is that the goal? I don't in, in, I know, know specifically. I'd have this. to dig in there to look at it. I don't have that memorized. Yet. I don't think there's been a yeah. proposal no. for the tennis courts. Yeah. I don't know where you got that number. Yeah. But, um, that wasn't what you wrote the, in your report? There's, there's no... It's not finalized. There is nothing it's not finalized, finalized. But the unfinalized version is a long about way Is a long way from the final yeah. version. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why we're talking tonight, too. It I think have the, only some thing, way of, uh, the only thing you've seen it. with the tennis courts over the past few years is $1,000, which goes into a reserve fund. Um, toward the maintenance of the tennis courts. But we are looking at a need for $10,000 to upgrade the tennis courts since FEMA rebuilt the tennis courts. Um, I think it's safe to say that any tennis court needs to be repaired within the seven to 10 year period. Oh, I'm not disputing and, that. I'm but just that's, saying this we are not looking at $10,000 or are we even looking at $5,000? In your unfinalized version, that's if not you what are you were referring about. to the minutes that I wrote, then yes, that was a discussion. That's as far as that went. Well, yes, it's a public document. That it is a public document. That was what went on in that meeting. It that represented that meeting only. <clears throat> are you able to give us an idea what you're thinking about for the the budget? No. Okay. No, no. You can wait. And, you want to wait until. Mason, I was, okay, I was okay. in that meeting. It was just a discussion. It was a discussion. Well, okay. I was just, I was we are not anywhere. We are not close to making a decision I mean, the on not what to recommend they to the know. select board. Yeah, they don't know yet. I think it's a wor I think it's a worthy thing to talk about. And actually, yeah. they are talking about it. In, but, we uh, talk about every <laughs> speck yeah. of that budget. Ad nauseum. Ad nauseum. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right, we got it. Joan, speaking of grants and budgets and stuff, what? what as long as it's not ad nauseum. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have anything to report because I'm doing the same stuff I've been doing for the past eight months. <laughs> FEMA and Federal Highway stuff, and compiling all the information necessary for both agencies for reimbursement to the town. Yeah. So that will continue for the next several meetings. Yeah, if it wasn't for the, um, the paperwork that you take care of, we would be um, looking at a pretty screwy budget. Thank you. Yes, so thank excuse you. Excuse me, Joan, this is still from the Bethel Mountain Road project, that's what you uh, know. Both, the, you know, the 23, 24 sites, oh, and okay. sites, as well as Bethel Mountain Road. Two federal agencies. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you. Is, I don't see anyone here f to report from the library tonight? No. Nope. Nope. Cooter, what's up on the... We had enough quiet weather to come to a meeting. We missed the bullet. Yeah, we did miss the bullet. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to a road hosting seminar on February 4th. The DMV is putting on over at Randolph. And hopefully I can we're going to do it right. <laughs> do it right. I know it feels Other like that, spring already, but <laughs> just the same old grind right now. So I saw you were um, beefing up the the back wall of the, uh, the sand sifter a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we're gonna have to do something with that. Yeah. Come spring, the back wall is blown out of the the concrete, and it's just got wore thin and yeah, gave up. So we patched it, sort of. Sort of, yeah, I saw that. All righty, Terry. Yes, everything's going good. Good. Still got somebody dumping water in on rainy days into the sewer, like. I guess I'm just gonna have to get up real early next time it rains. There's some drain somewhere. Every time it rains, I take it that. So Terry, what do you mean by that? It's like some sort of pollution. That's Someone's happening? running a sump sump pump in the basement that's inflating the amount of water running through okay, the, the sewer sorry. system. I didn't yeah. quite understand that. Yeah. Okay, so somebody on the town system is running a sump pump. Yeah, it's in, on site four too. It's not anywhere as any of the other ones. Yeah. How do you track that down? Go down three thirty four in the morning, turn the covers and check the flows. But if it's sump pump, if it's hit and miss, is the sump pump going to be running? Mm -hmm. And if it's running a long ways away, you know, you're going to see it. It's tough. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. <laughs> but the only time you can do it is when people aren't using water. So you got to be early in the morning. And you can talk about it in a public meeting so maybe people realize that the sump pump If they would just tell me, you know, I'd be glad to come maybe and, and help them yeah. figure out a Different solution. way to do it, yeah. That wouldn't affect us. Maybe uh, it's just a matter of information. Maybe they don't know. Maybe, yeah. You know, find a sump pump. The people that have had water running definitely know if they're they not pumping water anymore. What are they pumping the water to? That's the big thing is where it's going. Uh, because it's fairly recent, within the last couple of years, we didn't, after we put the system in, we didn't have this problem. So it's not something that's been going on for many years. It's been just the last three, I would say, two or three. And sometimes it's not doing it, so I mean, what this last storm it did. Storm four then. So, so the I mean, inconsistency. When you want to start looking. The, <laughs> so that makes you think it's not just a, a, a crack in the system that's letting groundwater in. It's good. Yeah. No. I don't believe it. Yeah. No. All right. Because we check all the manholes every year. So I mean, you would, you would definitely, if it was a crack in the manhole or something, we would see that. All righty, thank you. Um, along with the new business, we have a couple um, uh, applications for liquor license renewals for Maple Soul, one for inside and one for out on their porch when it's summertime. And I'd move to approve these two. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Also have here the um, the contract that we approved a couple of meetings ago with the SE group for the economic impact study. 
and this is just the um, paper com contract. So I'd move to execute that. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear SE. The, the SE group, which is doing the econ economic impact study on behalf of the town of Rochester, Granville, and Hancock for the Vellamont Trail project. What was that total? Hmm? I'm sorry. What was the total, or what was that you're approving? We're, we're executing the contract to um, for the town to be the pass through for a fifteen thousand dollar contract, which is going to be paid for with grant money that has already been secured. And so we're just the like uh, we were talking about earlier, how mu municipalities are in a position to um, um, get grant money. This is another one of those situations. Yeah. Who's issuing that grant? Oh, foolish that grant. Community Development Agency. The Community Development Agency. Yeah. State. Thank you. Of Vermont. Yes. And the contract is with the three towns. You said in question. It's with Rochester, but we we um, applied on behalf of the three towns. So it's the town of Rochester. Which applied. And and the fifteen grant is being issued to what entity? The S E group. That's. The contract for that's the um, engineers. Yeah, I guess it's an engineering group, and they're the ones that are doing the the analysis of the economic impact, potential economic impact, which is one of the pieces of the the. Um, and so the, the SD puzzle. group is uh, being contracted by Rochester. Yes. For this service. Yes. Rochester is the only town. I'll say it again. Rochester has made the application, and we're applying on behalf of Rochester, Granville, and Hancock. So there's. In behalf of Granville? Yeah, but well, Rochester is the one signing involved. the contract. But they are, we, they are involved in the application in terms of the scope of the study. But th those towns are not putting money toward this? It's None of the towns are putting money towards this. The state is putting money towards this. Yes. Do you in, um, do you anticipate that if they come back and say that um, it will be a big um, economic gain to this region that the town will be giving money towards that? Because I, the only reason I bring that up is I live in Ohio and we had a big uh, we're having a big um, bike trail put in and. They, when they did the economic study, they said, oh, this is going to bring in um, 180,000 bikers a year, and we, anticip we anticipate it's going to make the, this area, it's a very poor or Appalachian region of Ohio, and so what um, the town was going to do was going to be chipping in 90,000 towards that um, for the foreseeable future because, because they said, well, the economic gain is going to be so good. We want you to chip in. Do you anticipate that in Rochester? We've had no indications that that was um, the in the plan. No. Yeah. Okay. Of course, people could donate. Yeah. <laughs> you get free bikes. <laughs> no, no, that'd be a conflict of interest. Yeah. 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 Got. Okay, so we got that. Yeah. Recreation tennis court funding. Um, I think I'll. Oh, yep. Um, Harlan, do you want to? Did you come up with anything new about the book? Oh, I was wondering if you had. No, I haven't. I, um, Nancy, you did a little research on microfilm trying to track down an elusive oh. trail and had no, um, nothing on that, so. I, not yet. No, not yet. See, but there is, there's still hope. There's still hope. <laughs> yes, there's always hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Susan, you the had answers some. answers to the questions uh, posed by the lawsuit against the town could possibly be found in that file. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I uh, just wanted to thank John and the road crew. It, the bingo is so wonderful this year, and I really appreciate that, and um, particularly um, 
was the previous year was so horrible. Um, and I really, really appreciate that. We do it up on the roadies a lot. And we hear you guys complain about the lives. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and then the other, I just had a question. I had, was using the library the other day and uh, came out and the sidewalk along the park there was really pretty bad. And mm -hmm. there was a member of a community who's deaf and almost blind and was really having a, a tough time walking. And I just was wondering who, I know that there was a contract for the, the um, sidewalks, is that correct? Yes, there was a contract and, and then there was a, uh, an equipment breakdown which okay. led to a, a lapse in the... Um, okay, so maybe it was during that time, but I just yeah, would, yeah. was concerned about that and, and hope, yeah. hopeful that there was You're not home. alone in that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of... So yeah, is that smart. something that you anticipate will be... It's, it's as far as I understand that it's the equipment is up and running now, now that everything melted. You know, okay. Yeah. Well, no, I've, I've just as someone who has arthritis, and it's hard for me sometimes going short distances like that. Mm -hmm. I, I believe me, I agree with her. Yeah. Um, and I would love to see it. You know, we, we've always taken pretty good care of our sidewalks, I yeah. think, so it'd be nice to keep that up. Yeah. Try it. Thank you. <coughs> Piggybacking on sidewalks. Mm -hmm. For the library. The sidewalk ends, and then there's the distance from that to what gets plowed. Is that right away in that distance, state or town property? State. Because they obviously they don't plow up tight to the sidewalk, no. but what they leave there freezes overnight, and it could be pretty treacherous for older people mm -hmm. coming across mm -hmm. to get those steps. And I don't know how it could be dealt with. It's just we need to acknowledge that's a hazardous spot. Yeah, that is we do. Um, when they have a shot at it, the town tries to attack it, and the, when Mike goes to deal with the sidewalks, he, that's on his list it's of just spots. It just freezes sometimes. To hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. if no, they're addressing it, fine. Yeah, <laughs> trying to. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe we could find a grant for heated sidewalks. <laughs> First, we'd have to have sidewalks. Well, yeah, yeah, that would go along with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sidewalks that aren't in pieces. Yeah, right. Um, if anyone else have anything? I think that would be it. And we'll just sign some bills and go home. Thank you all for coming out.